is Alex from Swoosh English. So I mentioned in my first video this week, I was going to do some OET exam preparation, exam week videos. Probably doesn't even make sense the fact I've just said exam and exam in the same sentence. But anyway, you've got your exam. This is the this is the week that's really, really crucial. You know, you've just got a few days remaining. The tip I've got for you today is all about practicing your speaking this week really important and it seems really simple it seems really basic advice but i speak to a lot of students after they've taken their oet examination and i say to them you know how were your preparations you know what did you do or uh, even if i've spoken to students a day you know a day or two before but generally i speak to them after the exam i don't want to make them feel nervous about it because already naturally they're feeling very nervous and i ask them how much practice did you do for your speaking beforehand? And you know, this is generally for people who are not in our in our VIP programs, and especially those students who come to me at the uh, you know when they get the results, especially yesterday, and they said, unfortunately, Alex, I I, I got a you know I got a C plus or a C in my speaking, and I'm really disappointed. You know, I it was the writing that I was really focused on, and and I didn't expect to to fail speaking. They say to me that they didn't do either any practice at all in exam week or very, very little practice. It's so crucial that you you become, you familiarize yourself with the, with the format of the speaking examination and, you know, understanding every aspect of it. The fact that they're going to ask you some, you know, preparation, some warm up questions at the beginning that are not assessed. Then you've got your two to three minutes preparation time for each of the two role plays. You've got five minutes for each role play. Even very basic things like this, some nurses and doctors are going into the examination not understanding it. And not just that, but they're not getting the practice as well. So, of course, in an ideal world, you know, and I, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of financial difficulties out there for, for nurses and doctors, especially, you know, paying for the examination as well. But in, in an ideal world, you should be getting a native English speaking OET teacher to help you with with the speaking practice, with the role plays, giving you advice, telling you what you did right, what you didn't, what you did wrong, giving you an estimated grade, giving you an indication of what level you are at and what what things you need really need to do before your examination. Telling you about are you using empathy, you know, are you reassuring the patient? Are you are you, you know, going through as many of the bullet points on the role play card as possible? Uh, are you taking the the patient on a journey from A to B, you know, are you are you fulfilling the task set? What's your pronunciation like? Your fluency, your grammar, your vocabulary, all those really fundamental elements that will help you to achieve your grade B. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not doing that. So I'm doing a lot of speaking mock examinations this week for our students. I'm looking forward to them. It's my favorite part of OET is doing the speaking and I can really give them some hands-on feedback, hands-on advice. If you, you're in the situation where you cannot have access to a you know an OET teacher to help you, to give you the feedback and the corrections that you need, then get another nurse Okay, if you're a nurse, get another doctor. If you're a doctor, and have a, a, a study partner, and you can play the role of the the patient, the interlocutor, and and they can play the role of the, the the candidate, you know, the nurse or the doctor, and vice versa. You can switch roles and you can help each other. Of course, you always always have to be careful with the advice that you're you're being provided by uh, you know the the you know the person who is doing the role play with you. Because if their level is lower than you and they are saying you're doing this wrong and that wrong, you're not sure if what their advice is, you know, the advice that they're giving you, is it correct or not? But it's better than nothing, okay? It's better than nothing. So it's good to have the practice. It's good to understand the format. Good to, you know, look at previous OET role play cards and you can go onto the official OET website. There's some speaking role play cards on there. So practice with those. It's really important that you get some kind of practice, okay? Really, really important. And the things that I mentioned, focus on all of those, the pronunciation, the fluency, you know, reassuring the patient, being the leader, initiating the role play. That's another big mistake that I see a lot of students making. So hopefully this video was helpful to you today. 
I appreciate it does sound very simple, but a lot of people don't focus on the simple and you know they might spend hours and hours and hours reading role plays. Okay, it's not going to help you at this point in time because you're cramming information, you're trying to memorize everything. Really, you should be practicing now. You've got a few days remaining. I wish you all the best. I, you know, all the all the luck in the world, I wish you because, you know, passing this OET examination can really change everything for you. So fingers crossed, good luck. And if you've got any questions about today's video, make sure you put them in the message box below. If you want, if you're a student who's not taken the exam this week, or if you want some videos from us, free videos, we've got a an OET free three part video course. I always find it difficult to say that. If you go to swooshenglish.com and you can immediately download it. So hopefully that's helpful to you. And I will end on saying fingers crossed for your speaking role plays and fingers crossed as a whole.